Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. My name is Dark Sage Walker and today is going to be Arcana Spotlight time! And a number of you probably already know what's coming, but before we get the next Arcana running, let's decide what soundtrack we're going to be listening to. Let's go ahead and hit up the old random number generator. Here we go. Alright, random number between 1 and 3, and go! 1. Okay, back to the original soundtrack. Alright, now let's go ahead and change our robe. As per usual, we'll be switching to the tempo robe for this. So that I can kind of show off one, show off the spell I'm working with. And of course, it's going to be Obsidian Splitter. Now, I also want to make sure that I have a rather neutral relic like that one. Alright. So, Obsidian Splitter. The idea behind this one is obvious. You, you forge an axe out of stone and you take two big ol' swings with it. Now, this one's pretty easy to do the damage formula for. It's 15 times 2. I think that equals like 65, right? But this is another one where you can charge it. So after the first hit, you can do that, and it covers a little bit more range and changes the damage from 15 to 35. That is no small amount. That basically means that your combo can do 50 damage without upgrading it. That's right, Cecil. That's pretty nuts. So, it absolutely, it absolutely pays to try to get that charge off when you can. Um, <clears throat> also of note, if you're holding a direction when you do the, <clears throat> when you do the, when you do the attacks, you do move a little bit in that direction to try to get you in, within range, because very often, unless you're like right up on the enemy's butt there, you're gonna take a swing, and then the second swing is gonna miss because the knockback has pushed them out of range of the combo. Like that. So it pays to go hit, and then hold in their direction, and hit again. Well, or if you're throwing it, just hold the, just hit them at range, hold the button, and there you go. It's obviously a melee move, with a pretty decent range and a lovely little arc. So, it's got good damage, it's got a good arc. And you can adjust your adjust yourself a little bit while using it. So that having been said, it's also the second Earth-based basic arcana that I'm looking at for the Spotlight series. Why am I looking at it so quickly when I've been saving the best for last? Now you know. I'm not gonna mince words. I do not like Obsidian Splitter. Like, I'm not a big fan of Earth Knuckles either, but... <clears throat> and they both have some of the same problems. And especially in comparison to other basics, which have much faster startup times, like, this one even takes a few frames just to get going. And yeah, the arc is nice, but... With how slow Obsidian Splitter is, and I should stress, for a basic Arcana, it's slow. Like, it's real easy for enemies to get in on you, even with that wide arc, just to, just to slap you out of nowhere. Like, ghouls, ghouls and rogues are going to be your worst nightmare when using this, just because of how quickly they can close the distance and make you sorry that you decided to pick this up. So, there are a few relics that I would recommend using if you're going to use the Obsidian Splitter. One of them would be the Evening Gloves, which just make... 
which just makes the attack the attack overall fast. <clears throat> like it actually, <clears throat> sorry, it actually has fewer frames of startup, and the second hit isn't as open. Um, obviously, anything that's going to improve your power is good. With a base damage of 15, even small, even like a small attack power boost like Amulet of Sundering makes it go to 1717. Ouch. And then the charged hit goes up to 38, giving the total damage amount 55. And that's no, that's no small amount. And for a basic, that's a that is a good amount of damage. Like I'm not, I don't shit on Obsidian Splitter because it's strong. No, I shit on it because it's slow. Then the other thing that I would typically recommend when using this is where is it? The Chrono Glove. That basically makes that second attack near instantaneous. So it's so you get something you get to do that stronger combo much more consistently because the because the frame delay for the charge is almost non-existent. Now, let's look at a couple of things. Let's first Look at what Obsidian Splitter looks like when it's enhanced. So the damage formula doesn't change. But... But what does change is that when you throw it, it now has a boom. And that adds on even more damage. So now it goes 15-15 or 15 35 plus 20, so 55, with a nice area of effect. Now, this is something where you're definitely going to want to have the Glove of Patience or the... Oh, oh pardon me. Or the Chrono Glove to take full advantage of, because it's real easy to get caught off guard when you're, when you're using it. So, this bad boy only has two hits, so how does Sidewinder's bad effect? Well, it changes it from 15 to 19 per basic hit, so you're looking at 38 damage there. Certainly not terrible. And then the, the secondary hit for the charge is 9. And that puts our total damage up to 63, which, again, for a basic, really good. But you're looking at a total damage up damage upscaling of between 8 to 13, depending on whether or not you're using the charge. So it comes off as being a little lackluster. Like, certainly in comparison to something like with Bolt Rail and using Sidewinder's Bad with it or using Sidewinder's badge with Fiery Yo-Yo, def you're, not, you're definitely not getting the same results. And as far as the candies are concerned, once again, I recommend Cabby's Cotton Candy. The reason being is because, in one, it just, it's got a, a nice strong effect, a nice strong effect when, you, when using closer range basics. But also because it's sideways, like it, the size of its hitbox kind of matches, kind of matches how far out the obsidian splitter swings. So you're more guaranteed to land blows. Um, the other candies are more or less, uh, more or less average. With again, you're going to want to avoid cat citrus, citrus sweets because of that. It's gonna throw you way off with your combo. It's just not gonna be doing anyone any good. So obviously when you're using Obsidian Splitter, you want to go for just, just straight up raw damage. 
Like, it's hard to really say anything different with this one. All you want when using Obsidian Obsidian Power, perfect. All you want with Obsidian Splitter is just raw, unadulterated power. Just horsepower, just pure, unadulterated. <clears throat> That's what you want with Obsidian Splitter. And if we're going to be doing that... All right, first of all, let me take the overpowered dash to compensate for for this crappy arcana. Now, what other decent arcana do we have to kind of split the difference here? I mean, there's lots of good choices for a power build, and that's essentially what we're going to be doing, is I'm going to, going to be showing you how Obsidian Splitter works when using it for what you should probably be using it for, power. Like I said, Obsidian Splitter is not fancy. You don't need to really question how it works or what or what combos best into it. You just want to use pure, raw, unadulterated horsepower. In that vein, we'll be taking Radiant Knockout. I almost said Mighty Knockout, which probably would have been more accurate, not real honestly. And now, just to make sure that we have that we have a decent balance in our abilities, let's take something ranged that also that also works well with power. Unfortunately, not a lot of good ranged plays that do power. With one exception. Alright, so now we've got... Now we've got the axe, the mighty hammer, and the boomy ball. Then... What do we do for our relic? Now the obvious choice, like I said, is the chrono glove which is under miscellaneous, I keep misplacing it. Now, I'm not going to use that because I don't, like I said, I want to keep, like I don't necessarily want to show you the best options for everything, I want to show you ideas and then take it from there. So I think this time what I will do is I will start with Captain's Ring. So now what we really want is to find an air and a water arcana to really maximize our potential. Alright, is there any particular place where I should really start just to get out of the way? Not necessarily. I have pretty good coverage right now, so we'll just go. And we're starting with Shu. So, like I said, my uh, the problem that I have with okay, depending on whether or not I can get a cursed relic, I might grab I might grab that. Otherwise, it'll probably be chaos scanner, if anything. Like I said, my problem with the obsidian splitter is just that it's so slow. Like it's real easy to to find yourself kind of behind the curve just because you're. Your swings take forever to get out. Huh. Okay, so... I can either take the Alchemist Stone or the Wallet of Splendor. Either one will help. I think... Alright, so hear me out. Either one of these is good. I think I can get more money if I take the Alchemist Stone, but if I take the Wallet of Splendor, then I can still get bonuses from things like potentially the Pewter Bracelet, but also I still get the Health Regeneration from the Jewelry Box and Jade's Chakra Locket, <laughs> so I'm going to take that. And 
then yes, we will grab the Curse Eater's Mask. Alright, and we're back. So, I once again remind you that while whereas this one is strong, and that's obviously the biggest strength of it, sometimes power isn't everything when, you, when you're in a situation where you're getting overwhelmed. But that, of course, won't be happening necessarily in a lot of these rooms. That is something that we'll have to worry that we'll be seeing more of in the later floors. I can guarantee that because one, I'm not so great with melee builds, and two, that's generally where getting overwhelmed tends to happen. Ow. And hopefully you guys kind of noticed what I noticed there. Now, those of, there are probably those of you, those of you amongst my audience that are going, "Well, why'd you go for the charge swing there? That was a bad idea." Well, yeah, but that's pretty. Uh, it's also pretty much what Obsidian Splitter has going for it. Like, if you're not going for the charge, it actually is kind of lackluster. So, where, so you're kind of stuck in this spot where, yeah, on one hand, you're, oh, there's a, there's a good water arcana, speaking of which. And it's on sale, isn't that great? So now we've got a hammer, an axe, and a sword. It's kind of hard to be more prepared for war than that. See, and the other thing that makes Obsidian Splitter kind of lackluster for me is that it just doesn't do a good job against bosses. Now, that's not necessarily Obsidian Splitter's fault in, in, uh, in its entirety. Charged basics on the whole aren't great against bosses. Because with bosses, you want to be you want to be hitting them furiously and repeatedly while they're stunned in order to get the most damage out of your combo. If you're having to take some of that precious stun time and spend it waiting on a charge, well, that means you're either going you're either shorting yourself on your combo or you're just doing that over and over again, which again is slower than usual, which means you're actually shorting yourself quite a bit of damage. Now let's be now let's be crystal clear here. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that it's that that isn't viable necessarily, but there are other things out there that are definitely going to get you more. But also keep in mind what kind of player I am. I am definitely much happier with with control than I am with power. Some of you out there are much happier with power. 
and as far as I'm concerned, there isn't necessarily a defined right or wrong answer to that, but I have my preference because of my playstyle. I'm I am, as you know, a very aggressive player, so... <clears throat> so for me, combos, speed, and control are kind of where it's at. Heavy damage can be fine when it's all localized in one big hit, like with Exploding Fireball, for example. But from my basic, I prefer my basic to be speedy and controlling. Which is why I gave high praise to to Volt Rail, because it's exactly what I'm looking for in, a, in an Arcana. Now, one of the positives of, of Obsidian Splitter just came into it, just came into its own there, the idea that it's oh, got a nice wide hitbox that actually can hit behind it. And hey, what do you know? This is exactly the thing that I was saying I kind of wanted to be able to have for later. Which is why I chose you. But in this room, we also saw that the speed at which it takes to activate the Obsidian Splitter was actually a problem. Save. He'll save me some in the long run. Um, I'm kind of thinking about Stanza of Frost. It, do, it won't have a strong effect on my run in total. It might be better just for me to save my money. Which I think is probably the correct course of action. To save, to save the money. Now, I know that Poem of Fiery Rhyme would actually make both Exploding Fireball and Crystalline Balestra better, but I know my luck. There is a good chance I'm not seeing that second part. Hopefully you guys understand what I mean when I'll grab that temporarily. Hopefully you guys understand now when I say that it's just not that good against bosses. Now in comparison, Frost Blades, which is another one of my favorites, actually can work well against bosses. And what makes it different it, I may or may not come back for something there. I'm not 100% sure. Right now, I'm... Hmm, Flame Seekers does garbage for damage, doesn't it? Alright, well... Oh yeah, no, it does trash for damage. Presents? I love presents! VIP membership? Aw, oh, man!
and limited edition robe, which doesn't seem like it's going to help at all. But getting nearly the entire VIP membership there, that feels pretty good. Yeah, that charge time actually takes longer than normal. Well, not longer than normal, it seems like it takes longer than normal. Alright, well, Hunter's Stiletto makes me reconsider Toxic Bolus. <laughs> oh, and I got a freebie. Man, that's nice. Yeah, I'm not too concerned with, the, with anything else there. However, if I buy this basic... Oh, okay, too many things came up. I didn't want to buy all that. I was just looking to reset and see if I could... See if I could get... Honestly, I don't know what I thought I was looking for. I think my brain just kind of went haywire there and said, Start buying things! Maybe you'll get an enhanced Arcana to show up. It's like, that's not how Supply Crate works. Rain, we've been over this. So we're going to have a nice high damage run, make no mistake about that. And I guess in its own little way you could say, well, you're showing us what Obsidian Splitter is like in its element. I thought you said you didn't want to do that. Dark Sage. You're not being a hypocrite, are you? To which I would respond, yeah, but this is one of the this is one of only two ways to get this thing to work. Like, you might think that I'm showing it to you, like, enhanced in its element, but if you don't enhance it just a little bit, it actually ends up coming off as very lackluster. And... Now to get back to what I was saying about the charge. Now, that charge works great in theory. Because it's got some range to it, it's definitely not weak by any means. No, the problem comes in with the idea that it's just, that it's just so slow. And you've seen me many times now try to use the charge against a group of enemies and then get blindsided because you're just taking so long to get a hitbox out there. In a fast-paced game like this, you can't afford to be waiting that long. And you also just got to see an example of... An example of what I meant by how we, how later on you don't have a lot of time to wait for things to build up. Uh, 
that's why I say that the Chrono Glove or the Glove of Patience is merely a requirement for using this. So, to reiterate, if in, if in faster paced situations you can't really use the charge, at least not effectively, And in slower paced situations, it's hard to combo with the, with the uh, Obsidian Splitter, then why would you use it over anything else? And the answer is in case you really like axes. Like, in order to effectively use the charge, you basically have to be in, you have to be in pretty good control of the situation. know me. I, there, there are a number of words that I use very frequently to describe the arcana that I like. I like them quick. I like them controlling. I like, I like them, I mean, well done in a dark roast. Dark saves that didn't make any sense. But, if there's one word that I like to use more than anything else to describe the things that I like, it's consistent. Most of the uh, most of the arcana that I like, I like because they allow me to keep control, they allow me to be consistent. And, it's the, and that's that consistency that I start to lose when I'm trying to use when I'm trying to use the axe to its greatest potential. Obsidian Splitter for me fails because I don't have a, I don't have enough control over it. It just fails in a couple in a few too many key areas for me. Alright, so hopefully Iris will be selling an upgrade to, I mean, I'm thinking it would have to be Crystalline Balestra, because otherwise, oh, and she is, perfect. Okay, so I will go back to Dr. Song, give her the Balestra, and I'll grab the upgraded version of it. Plus, I could really use the healing, I am in a bad spot. Oh, you took the Bolus. Okay, I'm confused. Not that I'm complaining too much, because I can do this, and that will actually work as a fine little combo. Still alive, go away. Now see it's fine to use against those guys because they're they're slow and don't move very far when they do.
but yeah, everything else is just a little too quick for the splitter to really do what it's supposed to do. And yeah, when it hits, it hits like a truck. But it's, it's a very, it's an easily avoidable truck with a pull, with a very sleepy driver at the helm. You know, and it's from Arkansas. I don't understand Dark Sage. What was supposed to be the most damning part of that? Uh, the Arkansas part. <laughs> Freebie. Definitely take the token of elegance. And we'll once again save our money for the next floor. But Dark Sage, the next floor is the boss, you idiot! So hopefully you see what I mean when I say that it's just not very good against bosses. so bad. I like Water Prison, but I'm sticking with what I have. By the way, is it just me, or has Zeal shown up at level 3 a lot? I used to I used to complain about Atlas showing up, and I still do, by the way. That hasn't changed, but I still complain about it. Thanks, up button. That's exactly what I wanted to have happen. Some of you out there that are fans of this arcana, and I do, I am genuinely curious as to why. Like, maybe there's some. Curse Eater's bundle. Nice! Didn't even know there's a thing! Freebie. Like, if it's just because it's powerful. Okay, I get that, but there's ways to get power without sacrificing control. 
Hello, sir. I will give you this token of elegance. Thank you. Hey, if you just want big damage numbers, there's ways to get big damage numbers both faster and safer. Like I would, like I would actually just recommend bouncing blaze. That was not smart. I don't know what I was thinking. slow. Like, I'm, so, I'm sorry for those of you out there that really like this arcana. I get it, but I don't, but, but at the same time I don't. It's too slow. Outwardly, it doesn't look like it's that slow, but oh, trust me, it is. Oh, it is. Fortunately, that won't do me any good. Buy this and see if anything else interesting comes up after it. And no, no, it doesn't. Oh, hey, I forgot I had the, I forgot I had that going on for me. Okay. Oh, and yeah, I should go ahead and grab this. Oh, apparently the raffle ticket works on that too. So one of the things that's definitely changed throughout the course of the game is that the movement speed of the level 3 and level 2 enemies didn't used to increase. Not that much anyway. They were more aggressive, sure, but they didn't get they didn't get continually better as you as you went along. That is something out that definitely changed in the later updates. I should have thrown a fireball at him. So, that one change to how the game worked made Obsidian Splitter very difficult to work with, and it happened at around the same time as the Charge Basics came into the game anyway. there during that fight. Also, 
I'd like to point out that Iris apparently has the same feelings about Obsidian Splitter as I do, because she has not given me a chance to upgrade it. She's seriously just looking at me going, what are you doing to yourself? You're better than this. Sorry, Iris, but I made a promise to my viewers. We're gonna get through. We're gonna get through the. Uh, we're gonna get through all of the basic Arcanas on the basic Spotlight series. Even even if it's something like this. Like for real, for real though. Like for realsies. Why do you guys look at? Why does anyone use this? It's too slow. It doesn't have enough range. It leaves you out of control for too long. Get it. I really don't get it. Hello, sir. I'm actually quite okay with what I have right now, so I'll just stick with it. Thanks, guys. All right, what do we got here? Buy that, see if anything interesting comes up. Not really. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything here that's, you know, lighting my world on fire. Interesting, but I'm going to hold off on that. Hello again, ladies eel. to the finale. Yeah, but you guys didn't think you were going to see me use a split special fireball, did you? That was really dumb of me. I momentarily forgot which one was Scales of Babylon. I really, I really wish this was Fire Emblem so I could say Axe Beat Spear. 
but it kind of doesn't. <laughs> Give me that. Very good. I like. Oh, hey, she did let me upgrade it. She's like, okay, just this once. Okay, so there we go. We're gonna get rid of that. Dark stage, why? Because it's my video, damn it. with the obsidian splitter. We've already seen the problem, and that's that I can't do diddly dick to control his to control his null flash agents. Owie. Again, had that coming. There we go, and I didn't even use the Obsidian Splitter for most of that fight. And that's honestly kind of how I feel about Obsidian Splitter. This one, you can safely leave hanging on your wall. It's nice to have for completion's sake, but the moment you try to use it, you realize just how much it's holding you back. A hero's weapon, this is not. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'm sure there are a number of you who disagree with my opinion watching this video right now. So feel free to leave a comment. I don't mind having a conversation about why you disagree. So long as the conversation doesn't start with, You're such a dumbass! This is the best arcana ever because it's an axe! Start the conversation like that, and that's a quick road to I don't ever want to talk to you again. But, my own tomfoolery aside, thank you guys very much for coming and spending some of your free time with me. As per usual, links to my social media will be in the description, as well as, my, as, well as the link to my Patreon. And I'm going to start doing some work on some exclusive content for that to actually make it worth a damn. But as of right now, it's just there. It's just there for you guys to maybe contribute towards a brighter future in a really cool and positive way. But that's it for that. So drop a comment, leave a like, subscribe if you want. And well, no, I need you to subscribe. So do that. Do that now. Make a brother feel good. Alright, that's it for me. I'm rambling at this point, so thank you guys very much for watching. My name is Dark Sage Walker, and I will be seeing you.